So van number two is well underway. So I thought I would give you a little update on what's going on in the shop. Um, one of the things that I do with my 8020, once I get my sketches and my orders and my cut list together, I actually order the 8020 in packages pertaining to what module it is I'm building. This is the galley module right here. So all of this material that I ordered from 8020, including the hardware, would be one order. And it comes bundled nice and tightly and neatly. So now I know this is the galley bundle. I can set it aside. This is the refrigerator module, okay? Same thing, once I get all my, my design done, I order it from 8020, it comes in a nice tidy bundle. Now I know what that is. Uh, another thing that was crazy is I started to do my, uh, I'll show you this on a better shot. I started to do my weight distribution, just the heavier items that are going in the van and where they're gonna go and balancing it on either side. The water tank is under the galley, that's 300 pounds of, of weight. The refrigerator's across the aisle, that's 100. You get the idea. So I went around with the heavier items, 385, 385. It's balanced to the pound left to right. And I didn't do that on purpose, I just did that by gut. Just, you know, intuition of knowing where things should go. I had to make a couple of improvements to the way I work in here. And it's obvious that when you begin in a shop, things are gonna morph, things are gonna improve. For instance, uh, this may not be a big deal to you, the screw cart. But if you realize that when I began building Van 01, I had all my screws in a nut bucket. Nut bucket! And I've graduated beyond the nut bucket. Nut bucket! So now I've got a screw cart. It's not as much fun to say screw cart as it is to say nut bucket. Nut bucket! But that's an upgrade right there. Another thing we did, wait till you see this thing. As you know, I like to keep everything on wheels. That way the shop can move and morph as I need it to. So uh, I, I saw that we, we needed to have a sanding station, a sanding station we could move around. There's some things we have to sand and I don't have a proper air handling system. We take it outside. So that's what that's all about. This is a, a, a table disc sander that Alex brought down. He got this from an old woodworker that was going out of business and he gave it to him. So this motor, this, this sanding, this thing has gotta be close to 100 pounds. This is an old motor, old Delta motor from the 60s, I believe. But man, when this thing gets up and running, it's quiet, it's balanced, and we could do some beautiful shaping on this thing. So rather than lift it up off the floor onto the table every time you need to use it, I finally got around to getting a cart to put it on. And you, you got to make sure that if you're going to be doing these carts for things, make sure the wheels are big enough. If you buy too small a wheel, it's too heavy, it won't move well. So over here now, this is going to be my upholstery center. This is where I wrap my vinyl and do all my upholstery and I'm setting up the tools. This can be a clean area. This used to be where Alex used to work. I took more space. I took a little bit of extra space through these double doors over here. Another 250 square feet. That's gonna be the cutting room. That's gonna be where Alex has all his tools and his cutting. So this area is gonna remain relatively dust free. So this will be a clean area for upholstery. I still put up a, I put up a shelving unit for each van that's in house. And that's where we put all their materials and components as they come in. Uh, oh, I ordered this beautiful shop saw, a, a cabinet saw. 
beautiful table saw. That shipped today, so that'll be coming in next week, and we're putting that in that cutting room along with some other new tools that I bought. Make the job easier, make the product better, quicker. This is what I'm doing now. I did this when I was 18 years old with my photo studio. I started out with some rudimentary equipment, and as time went on, I upgraded and upgraded to the point where I was one of the first studios to go digital around 1985, digital cameras, stopped shooting film, and I never looked back. So I'm gonna give you a full explanation of this when we're in the van, but I figured while this was out on the table, I could show you what the hell I'm talking about. The, the water tank is gonna sit on the van floor, the bare van floor, I'll put in some heavy mass vinyl. I'll put in a little bit of foam insulation. Let the tank sit on that. But that's the lowest we can get anything in the van. Then I come in with my one inch tubing and my half inch plywood subfloor. Then I put my modules on top of that. And what that does for us is it gives us this inch and a half trough that the water tank sits in. So the flooring and everything built up on top of the flooring holds the tank in place. Once I get this in and we're installed and locked down, then I come over to these cross members. I've got two of them here. I loosen them and I drop those down till they're on top of the tank. I tighten them up. Now that tank can't move any which way, no matter what road you go over. It's locked in nice and tight. Now, if you were to remove, this is the front and all of our drawer panels are proud of the frame. That means they sit out here. The frame acts as the drawer stop. You take out all these drawers, you're wide open access to the water tank. As I explained, there's a, a pickup tube here. You'll be able to get at your water pump from a number of directions to clean the filter. If you have to change the pump, no problem. Wago connectors, boom, boom, boom. Pump's done, let's have breakfast. So tank's wide open, you got all the access you need. I'm gonna have a clean out port, as you know. So that's how that's gonna work. I'll show you again when we're inside. I gotta go show you this tower now. This is the refrigerator, look. Look at this tower, isn't this cool? This is the refrigerator module. Uh, I'm not locked down yet because we gotta put it inside and take some measurements. But basically, uh, what we ordered was a front venting refrigerator freezer. I think that's Novacool. It looks like a nice unit. Uh, so that's gonna go in this big opening here and we're gonna push that as high as we can in the van. Uh, so basically your fridge is at eye level now, as high as possible. And what that does for us now is now we've got this massive open area under the fridge to the van floor. This is actually gonna be a laundry drawer for them. I think it's 16 or 18 inches tall by, uh, and then 24 inches deep, 23 inches wide. So this is gonna be a nice big laundry drawer. They could probably go three, four weeks before they need to fill this and, and get to the laundromat. Uh, but I did a little bit of anticipation. I put obviously smooth side in front where it faces out into the aisle, but just in case I've got a jog for my shower box, the shower is gonna be on this side. So I've got my supports in place to hold that shower box but if I jog it back an inch and a half, I've got a finished, a finished edge of 80-20 and have that jog there. So that's what the, uh, the I can't wait to put this in. So if, if you can see it here, uh, I've got these two, I call them runners or sleds. This, these two runners are where the refrigerator feet sit. So when you put the fridge on this ledge, you push it in, it slides right down on these two sleds. Smooth. And they're inboard of the frame. If you see, obviously they have to be because the feet have to slide on them. So my other supports are outboard and this one's inboard. Now, once we determine the actual height of the fridge, then I come in and I put a secondary leg on each of these sleds and, and take that weight right down to the floor rather than hanging it on brackets on these legs. So it's a secondary support system for the fridge. 
You remember me working with Rivnuts? It was rough. Now, some of them are easy. If you got a riv nut you're putting in a wall right here, that's no problem. But when you're up, you got to hold the gun high, you got to do this. It was killing me. I took care of that. This is a riv nut setting tool. It's air powered by Ballhoff. Okay? This baby is going to set riv nuts perfectly every time. Now I've got the chucks and the anchors to do a number of different size machine screws. So like I said, I never liked self tappers. I don't like that kind of screw. I want a machine screw. I want to be able to put that screw in and back it out and put it in and back it out without wearing down the hole or ruining the connection. Riv nuts. So another thing that I did on van one was I had to make some brackets for different things. And I was using my vise and I was hammering them out and they worked very well. But it made me realize I could do so much more if I had the right tools. So I'm dabbling, okay? This is a little ditty uh, that I picked up. This is a, it's a bender and it's not a very good one. It's an introduction. It's gonna show me what I can do and what I can't do. Uh, basically, I need to be able to work with up to quarter inch aluminum for the brackets I need. So that's how I'm doing this. This is a, uh, this is a, a manual bench bender. And what I gotta do is I gotta calibrate and start to learn where 90 degrees is if I want to put a bend in something. See that? So I can make my own brackets now. That's a big deal because I made a lot of brackets for van number one and I can't wait to make more. See? Put this in there and the sad thing is I didn't take any video of those brackets but there's a bunch of handmade brackets in the van and uh, maybe you'll see them if you see the van out on the road. You know, that's an offset. <clears throat> I used an offset like this to hang my shore power box outside off the side of the, the hitch, trailer hitch, offset bracket. It was beautiful, it was a work of art. I did it by hand with the vise and a hammer. But now I can become very precise with my brackets. I can pre-drill this, put it in the bender, put it on the van. We'll see how this works.